Good evening, everyone. Happy Sabbath, Shabbat. It is now the beginning of the Sabbath at 6 o'clock on Friday. It actually is actually Saturday from 6 o'clock, our Friday to 6 o'clock. The, the Greek Saturday is the Sabbath. Well, no, this, this is actually Saturday, the beginning of the day, according to the scripture, evening and morning was the first day. And this teaching today is, is going to bother some of you, and some of you already know the truth, and I want the truth to make you free. And it's time for us as leaders not to get so emotional that we don't have an understanding of the scriptures. I don't claim to have all knowledge, but I have some knowledge. I, I searched the scripture, and there have been errors over the years in what has been stated. Good evening, Doris. I'm, uh, Dolores, I'm, I'm not going to call all these names because this is going on YouTube for the world to see. It's a, this is an important teaching for the people and the church because we have got involved in some things that are not of God, but I'm thankful that he is, he is merciful to, to the point where he's given us time to come to a knowledge of the truth. And, and I, I'm not saying I'm the only one that knows the truth, but I'm going to reveal to you what has been revealed to me according to the word and I definitely want you to to follow me. I want you to have paper and pencils and I want you to write down these things that I'm going to show you some some math and some calcula calculation is involved is involved and that's the reason that many won't take time to study the scriptures because there is a time frame. There is a time frame. I'm, I'm going to wait for wait for about a minute for others to come on. There, I know many are probably busy with these practices, and the merchants are so happy this time of the year. And, and <laughs> that's as far as I'm going with that one. Father God, is in the name of Jesus, I come to you once again thanking you for all things. In all things, I give you thanks. Uh, there are things that's difficult, but I'm thankful, Lord, that even when with the trials, you promised that you would, with the trial, make a way of escape. So, Lord, I welcome the escape route that you give us when the trial gets heavy because you said your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Forgive me, Lord, for my sins, my shortcomings, my trespasses, and dreams, Lord, that I, that I can't remember, but I don't want even sin against you in my dreams because this, this spirit never dies. And sometimes, Lord, when we're comfortable in, in, in our sleep, that rascal will try to influence our minds but Father I pray that you the Shekinah glory overshadows me now as we go into your word speak to me speak through me give me clarity of speech clarity of mind and let nothing be done for vain glory speak to my heart let, let the words that come out of my mouth be from you I thank you, Lord. I thank you again. And I always ask you to take me out of myself and hide me. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Cover me with your blood. Let the Shekinah glory prevail. And let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. I told you on Facebook we're going to talk about the birth of Christ, beginning with Zacharias and Elizabeth, 
Mary, the birth of John, and then Jesus. Because all of this is important if we want to know the time frame of his birth. And I'll tell you, tell you point blank emphatically that it is not December 25th. I don't know the date, but I, but we'll, we'll definitely know the month when, you, when we get through with this because it's already, it's already set out. Now, I like something that Luke said in those first four verses, and, and we need to apply it to our, to our thing. He said, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the begin, beginning were our witnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee what? In order, most excellent uh, Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. We need to know the certainty of the things that we are hearing. It's, it's our right to question pastors. It's our right to question teachers. If, if, if you feel uneasy and, and this thing is not according to the word, make them explain it through the word and not our own understanding. If it doesn't align with the word, it's false. So, so the, the first thing that Luke talks about that's very important that, that's missed uh, in the birth of Christ because this is where it begins. It says, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. Stop right there. Underline A B I A. Abiah. Abia. Abia. And, and in First Chronicles, it's, it's pronounced differently, okay? The course, that, that, partic but that particular course will, will let us know the beginning of the birth of Christ. Now turn to, to First Chronicles, the 24th chapter, and the 10th verse. Because when David was uh, was uh, setting things in in order for the for for the priests to minister in the temple, there there were twenty four tribes. So these priests would minister every two years in order. And uh, and I want you to understand something. According to to Exodus, the twelfth chapter. And the and the what the uh, not I'm sorry ex, the thirteenth chapter and, and the fourth verse and also uh, Esther the third chapter and the seventh verse you see the words Nisan N I S S A N and Abib A B I B which is the month of April April was declared to be the first month even though Constantine and others changed it uh, to to January in God's eyes. April is the first month. And when we look at verse 10, the, uh, the eighth order or the eighth lot or the eighth month was given to Abijah. And that's where, that's where Zechariah came from. That was his tribe. Every two years, this tribe, or th this priest, would go into the temple. To, to, and, and, and what he did, he, he was lighting incense, okay? In the month of December. December is their eighth month. December is the eighth month. Not uh, August. December. I mean, no, uh, November, I'm sorry. He was in this office <coughs> in November. Are you with me? Now... Let's go back. To, let's go back to Luke. And his wife Elizabeth, 
they're very similar to uh, Abraham and, and Sarah. Uh, they were old in age, and and uh, I said they were. Uh, his wife's name was Elizabeth, as you see in that fifth verse. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. They were blameless. And they had no child because Elizabeth was bearing and they were now old. Stricken in years. Let's just say old. They were, they were old. Now, what was he doing in verse 8? He was, it came to pass that while he exu ex executed the priest's office in the eighth month, in November, before God, in the order of his course, the order of his course was November, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot, or his month, was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. See another one, my daughters. All right. Now I'm not going. I'm not going to 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 try to read all this. But but uh, while he was in the office, when you you what appeared to him in verse eleven, while the multitude was outside and, and because they they couldn't they couldn't come inside, they had to stay in the outer court. What happened in verse eleven, Luke one and eleven? There appeared unto him an angel of the Lord. Standing on the right side of the altar of incense. So I, I told you he was lighting the incense in the temple. And Zacharias is like Robert Brown. That would have bothered me. My bowels would have probably started moving real quick. And, and when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. And the angel said to him, don't fear. Because they had been praying. I told you they were righteous. They were righteous. I don't, I don't care how old they were. They were still praying. They were still praying. Even though they were stricken in years, they were praying for the child. And what did the angels uh, say in verse 13? Your prayers heard. And thy wife, Elizabeth, doesn't say bear you a baby. What does it say? Bear you a son. And you're going to call his name John. And he's going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Even from his mother's womb. Before she gives birth, he has the Holy Ghost. And that's, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> Zacharias. Like Robert Brown, looked at the outward. Look at verse eighteen. He looked. He looked at the natural man. Uh, how, how can I know that I'm an old man, and and my wife is you know, she ain't no young she ain't no youngster either. And what was this angel's name? I told you, angels don't have wings. In, in, in Daniel, Gabriel is also called a man. So, so I'm Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. He's, he's the Lord's messenger even to this day. Even to this day. Be careful to entertain strangers for some of have entertained angels unaware because they're men. And I'm come to show you this. But because of your doubt, because of your doubt, what happens in verse 20? You're going to be dumb, not able to speak, until the day these things are performed, because you didn't believe my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Underline the season. Underline the season. Keep in mind, he's there in November. He has not, he, 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 he hasn't seen his wife. He cannot leave until his Two is over. And, uh, okay, when his days were accomplished, when he was through, in verse uh, 24, after those days, 
It came to pass in 23, as soon as his days of his administration was accomplished, what did he do? Went to his own house because now it's time for the ninth lot. It's now December. He left the temple in December. And after those days, after December, the very next month of January, the Jewish 10th month, our first month, Elizabeth conceived. He didn't take no time. No time. She was one month pregnant in the month of January. That's the, that is <laughs> the Jewish 10th month and our first month. Stay with me. Stay with me. And what did she do in verse 24? What did she do? She hid herself for five months. Okay? She hid herself until May. Our, our May is their second month and our fifth month. She hid herself for five months from January to May. Stay with me. Because I'm, get, I'm going, getting ready to get rid of some of this false doctrine and save you some money next year if y'all want to. But, uh, so she hid herself because the feast started in that first month, the first month of April. She hid herself for five months. She didn't even attend the feast. And in her sixth month of pregnancy, what happens in verse 26? What happens in her sixth month of, of pregnancy? That is the time that God appeared to Mary in the Jewish third month and our sixth month. We're now in the month of June. Am I going too fast? He appeared to Mary in the Jewish second month and our sixth month. That sixth month was the month of June. It's, it's just ironic that that, word, that six comes up. And she was a virgin. And when you see the word expoused, that, that, that's still the same as being married. She can't, she can't marry anybody. That, that's, that's Joseph's wife. It's a binding agreement. And, <laughs> and 28, I'm going to put a stop to some stuff that, something else y'all doing. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. This is the only person in the whole world that has ever been blessed and highly favored because of all the population of women in the whole world. Mary was, was the one that stood out to be blessed and highly favored to bring forth our Savior and Lord. She is the only one that is blessed. I, I'll be greeting for How are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. Uh, no, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not a virgin. You didn't get ready to have no baby. And you know the story. She, you know, she was troubled. She was troubled, but and said, don't worry about it. You, you found favor with God. Blessed and highly favored. See, verse, verse 30, there's that favor again. And, and you shall conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. That's another son. And shall call his name Jesus. You know the rest of the story. You, you know the rest of the story. And, and uh, <laughs> he showed in verse 35 that the Holy Spirit would overshadow her. She would be blessed from top to bottom. Nothing goes in the womb. The, her whole body. Mary has a seed. No, no sperm comes into her. 
Mary is conceiving a child with, without a man being involved other than, than, than God the Father. And, and notice uh, his purpose. His, his name will be Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And, and I've been talking to you about the kingdom. Guess who's going to uh, look at, look at verse, uh, verse 32. Shall give unto him the throne of, of, of his father David. He's the root and offspring of David. And how's that going to happen? Look, verse, verse 35, I already told you. The Holy Ghost shall come up on you, not in you. Up on you. And shall overshadow you. Therefore, an underlined thing, T-H-I-N-G. That holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And that's when he told Mary about her cousin Elizabeth that was now in her sixth month of pregnancy. The Lord appeared to Mary in, in, in uh, Elizabeth's sixth month of preg pregnancy. I told you it's, it's their third month of June and our sixth month of June. Okay? In June. What does Mary do? She arose in a hurry and went to where Elizabeth was and went, went, went into the city of Judah. And, and look at verse look at verse 40. She entered into the house of, Zach, of Zacharias because he was there too. He just couldn't talk. He couldn't do anything yet. And saluted Elizabeth. And did God, did, did Gabriel not tell uh, Zacharias that his son would be filled with the Holy Ghost from birth well there was a, another reaction it came to pass in verse 31 that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary the babe leaped in her womb a six month unborn child The type of child people are aborting because they think it has no life. Well, at six months, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. I then told y'all the Holy Ghost was here before the day of Pentecost. This is before the book of Acts. And she began to proph prophesy. I'm not going to read all that. I'm not going to read all that. Let's let's go. And let's go to uh, verse fifty-six. How long did Mary stay with Elizabeth? For about three months. Okay, that meant that Mary, you're now three months pregnant. Mary, you went there in June. So. The month of July, you was one month. August, you two months. September, you're three months pregnant. When Mary was three months pregnant, she left Elizabeth because John the Baptist was about to be born because, it, because she, Elizabeth, was now nine months pregnant. From, from uh, June to September... July, August, September. It's three months. She's now nine months pregnant, and Mary knew it was time for John, John to be delivered, so she left three months pregnant. Stop and think about something. If Mary was just three months pregnant, let's say September the 25th, October, November, December. That's six months. If Jesus was born December the 25th, Mary would have had a six-month premature baby. 
You hear what I just said? Mary would have had a six-month premature baby. She left in October because winter was coming. The, the shepherds leave the field from October till sometimes in, in, in March. And we, and we got, we got to be careful, careful about that. We got, got to be careful about the dates. Keep in mind that the Jewish calendar only has 360 days. The Greek calendar has 365. When we're celebrating December the 31st, it's actually January the 5th on the Jewish calendar. That's important. Five days ahead. Five days ahead, okay? Now, let's go on. Let's go on. Uh, she's gone home now. And finally... I'm going to have to go back to, let's, let's go back to Matthew because something happened that in the month of September. Notice that Zacharias was dumb. He couldn't talk because of unbelief. He was told what the child's name would be called. Okay. Uh, go back to go back to, to uh, I'm sorry Luke Luke 1 and 57 Mary had just left in the month of September why because Elizabeth's full time in verse had come in September that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son and her neighbors and cousins heard how the Lord had showed this old woman great mercy. They rejoiced. And on the eighth day, and not like eighth day because that's very important even when it comes to Jesus. This eighth day. Underline that eighth day. Because on that eighth day, they circumcised the child. And when they circumcised the child, even even when Jesus did not receive his name till he was circumcised. That's, that was the custom. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias Jr., or Zacharias, after the name of his father. And his mother answered, not so. His name shall be called John. He said, ain't none, nobody in your family named John. Who's that baby daddy? Ain't nobody in your family name. And, and not... Zacharias was not only dumb, he was deaf. That's not bought out in scripture. He was deaf. How do I know? Because they made signs. If he could hear, the only thing they had to do was, uh, Zacharias, what do you want to name the boy? They made signs. Look at verse 62. How he would have what would have him called, and what he do. He made signs too. Okay, so what did they do? He he asked for a writing table, not just he wanted the whole table, a writing table, and wrote and said his name is John. And after 11 months, finally, the man was able to speak. When he and Elizabeth came together for John to be conceived, he couldn't talk. He could not talk. But he let her know some kind of way, probably in writing, what to call him, what the angel had said. And, and in verse 64, his mouth was opened Immediately, and his tongue was loose, and he spake and praised God. And look what and look what happens in verse sixty-seven before the day of Pentecost. What happened? 
the priests now, filled with the Holy Ghost, prophesied. Y'all can read that when we get off. He prophesied. Now he could talk. Now, we're through with John. John the Baptist is born. And he's actually six months six months older than Jesus. His cousin. Now now let's go to chapter two. And it came to pass in those days, after after Murray had left, in those days, I don't even know how, how old John was, in those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world, the world then was considered Rome, all of Rome should be, should be taxed. You don't tax folk in the winter time. Somebody's going to die of pneumonia. Some are not going to be able to make it. Shepherds can't abide in the field. We'll talk about that. And they went from their towns to be, uh, to the, uh, and they all went everyone into his own city. Joseph went up to Galilee, out of where he, out of Nazareth, unto Judea, to Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his <laughs> pregnant, espoused wife. And she was out there. The woman, the woman was huge. It says, being great with child. Everybody knew she was pregnant. And it was so after they were there. They weren't the only ones there. There were folk coming. It was, it was, it was a lot of noise after they were there. It was time for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. That was prophetic. It was prophetic because Jesus himself was wrapped up in sinful flesh to be our Savior. So she wrapped him up because there was no room in the inn and quit blaming that owner of the inn. Folk were coming from all over the world to be taxed. Mary and, and, and Joseph didn't get there in time to get a room and neither did a whole lot more folk. They were not the only ones where there was no room in the inn. Okay? Don't, don't, don't just run with that. That man was a businessman. But he had a heart. He told them about a cave out there. We call a manger. There was a cave. And, and uh, the manger is a cave. That's in, that's in verse 7. The, there was no room for them in the end. And, and you'll see that in Matthew 1 and 25 also. Now, keep in mind. This next verse has nothing to do with the manger. Nothing. Nothing. They are abiding in the same country. Not where they were. In the same country. Shepherds abiding in the field. You don't abide in the field in the wintertime. You take your behind outside right now. You and your animals and see how long you're going to stay there. They... This was not wintertime. They don't abide in the wintertime. They've got sense enough to take their sheep into the sheepfold. They, where, they, where they can be watched, where they can be, where they can be warm. They don't abuse the animals. They were abiding in the fields. They were camping out. Keeping watch over their flock by night. In the nighttime. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the Shekinah, the Shekinah, the glory of the Lord, shone round about them, the shepherds, the animals. Zacharias was fearful. 
But these men were so fearful. They were so... Have you ever... <laughs> something just happened to your body when you get scared. And you're so afraid. Well, they were so afraid. They were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Underline this. And this shall be a sign, a sign unto you. You shall, shall, you shall find the babe, uh, highlight babe. This is an important word. Highlight babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And where do you get this song? Sil Silent night, holy night. All this calm. What's so calm about the next verse? And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying. There were voices. They were not singing. Angels do not sing. They do not sing. Have I been singing? I've been saying. Okay, go, go to Revelation 5 and 11. I'm, I, I, I know how we are. Revelation 5 and 11. Now I'm talking about these angels around, around the throne of God. I, and I beheld and I heard, heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was <laughs> was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. But what's the next verse say? Were they singing? Were they singing? They were saying, the same way they were to the shepherd, they were saying with a loud voice, worthy is a lamb that was slain, and so forth and so forth. These same angels that were saying things in Revelation 5 and 11 were saying Go back, go back to uh, Luke 2. It's a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying. They were not singing. That's another lie of man. They were not singing. They were saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill. It was a refrain. It was a refrain. And what happened? <laughs> I told you underlined thing, a uh, uh, sign, right? Now, now we're going we're gonna to see what else is called. And it came to pass as the angels were going away from them, it wasn't, they weren't around the manger. I told y'all, it was not so, sleep in heavenly peace. It was, they weren't singing to no baby. They were talking to the shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night because shepherds were the first ones to deliver the message about the Savior because Jesus came as the good shepherd. They were going away to hell and the shepherds said one to another, let us now uh, go not even unto Bethlehem and see this thing. It was, it was in verse 12 it says it's going to be a sign, right? A sign unto you. And what sign is a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes? Well, let's go see this thing. Which has come to pass. That the Lord has made known to us. And when they came in verse 16, they saw the sign. They saw the sign. They did not go into the manger. Now I'm going to explain to you why they could not go in there. They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph Underline the babe, the babe, B A B E, the babe, lying in the manger. It says nothing about them going in there. When, when they saw it, when they saw it, verse 17, when they had seen it, said so nothing, they could not go in, in that manger. They made known abroad the saying which they told him concerning this child. And they that heard it wondered at those things which were told 
them by the shepherds. I told you the shepherds were the first to bring the word. They were the first to bring the word before John the Baptist. They brought the word. Another dumb song, song. Mary, did you know? Mary, she was the first to know. Look at verse 19. Mary, did you know? I, don't sing that song. Mary, did you know? Yes, she, she was the first one to know other than God. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Yes, you knew. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Now, we dealt with Zacharias. We dealt with Elizabeth and John the Baptist being born in, in September. And I told you, no one but Mary and Joseph was allowed in the cave. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name, after the circumcision, I told you, a child is not named for, for eight days. And God didn't name him. I didn't write this. What did, what? His name was called Jesus. Because there were already many, many Jesuses. Joshua. Bar Jesus. Before he was born. God allowed Gabriel to name him. He was so named of the angel. So named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now. <laughs> and when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses was accomplished. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. I told you, number one, you don't see anything about the wise men because they weren't there. You don't see anything about the shepherds going into the manger because they could not. Because they were under the law. Go with me to uh, Leviticus 12. They did not go from the manger straight <laughs> straight to Jerusalem. Uh, Mary had to Mary was unclean. Women, when you had a child, you were unclean. She did not take him to be circumcised for eight days. She was un she was still unclean. She was unclean. Now she was under the law. Leviticus 12 and 2. When the, after the, Lord, he, the Lord spake this unto Moses. Speak unto the children of Israel. Saying, if a woman have conceived seed. And born a man child. Then. She shall be unclean. Seven days. That's at birth. On the eighth day. She takes to be circumcised. That's eight days, right? Eight days. According to the days of the separation of her infirmity. Because in the eighth day, that's eight, 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 eight days, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Underline this. Mary was unclean for quite a while. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying Three and thirty days. Okay, you're already, you're already unclean for eight days. Now, you're unclean for 33 more days, which means 41, 41 days of uncleanliness. And she shall touch no hollow thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. She cannot go to Jerusalem uh, for 41 
days. Well, for 30, 33 days after he was, he was circumcised. Now, go back to Luke 2 and 22. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, after the, the total of 41 days, then she brought him to the Lord to present him to the Lord. She couldn't, she couldn't present him to the Lord in an unclean state. <sighs> a man, when a man was born, he was called holy. She couldn't, she couldn't, she couldn't touch him. Because look at verse 22, as it's written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the, the womb shall be called holy, holy to the Lord. She was holding a, a holy child. Now, <laughs> now let's go back to Matthew. Let's get the whole story. <sighs> Joseph could touch her now after 41 days. Okay, they, they're close now. Matthew, the second chapter. He's born now. When he was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. He was already born. He was already born. Saying, where is he the born king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east. We've come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled. I ain't going to read all that thing. I, I'm not going to read all that. But they, he asked where they would be born. And, what, and, and, and he, command, he asked in the... It, it, okay, I'm going to read this. Verse, verse 3. And Herod the king had heard these things. He was troubled. Because... <laughs> what was the question these wise men asked? Where is he this born king of the Jews? Wait a minute. Hey, hey y'all. Wait, wait, wait. I'm the king. And when, when, when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled. And Jerusalem with him. So what did he do in verse 4? He gathered all the chief priests and scribes and people together and demanded them. He wasn't asking, demanded him. Wh where was Christ born? What? what? They said Bethlehem of Judea. For it's written in the prophet, you got these chief priests, they, have they not read? And in Herod, verse 7, after he talked to these priests and things, he he privately called the wise men with this sneaky self. Hey, y'all, uh, let me ask you something. When did you say you saw his star in the east and come to worship him, uh, when you see that star? And they, they told him, and it, and it wasn't at his birth time. And when, and he sent them to Bethlehem, go, go look for that. What is he now? Who are they going to look for, a babe? Are they going to look for a babe? Underline what they're going to look for. Not a babe. He's not a babe now. The young child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I may come and worship him also. And, and they, when they heard, heard the king, they departed and lo, the star, the same star that led from the east to Bethlehem, which is not an overnight trip. And it came and stood over, not a baby. It stood over where the young child was. And when they, when they saw the, the star, they rejoiced with a with exceeding joy. Now, verse 11 will tell you something. And when they were come into the man, not manger, they were now in a house. They were now in a house. The boy, the babe was now a, 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 young, a young child. They were come into the house. They saw 
the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And they opened the treasures. They presented unto him gifts. Now, different gifts now. Gold and frankincense and myrrh. And we know what that's for. Gold for his kingship. Uh, frankincense for a priestly office. And myrrh for his death. And the Lord warned them, uh, y'all get out of here. Y'all get out of here because uh, uh, you go back to Herod, you're in trouble. And what happens in verse, verse 13, and there were not three wise men. Notice there were three gifts. There might have been 30 or 40 wise men. When they were departed, the angel of the Lord told Joseph, get, y'all get out of here, go to Egypt. And, and in verse 14, where did he go? He took the child to Egypt. And he was there to, to hear it died. Now go down to verse 16. When he saw he was mocked by the wise man, he was mad. What did he do? He slew, slew all the children of Bethlehem and all the coast from what age? How old was Jesus at least? Two years and under according to the, the time which he had diligently asked the wise men. The wise men told him, the child has already been born. He, 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 he is of age. We're looking for, we're looking for a child. And <laughs> they went to Egypt. And when Herod was dead, verse 20, rise and take the young child and his mother and go, and go on back to Israel. And they took the young child. Jesus was a young child. Now, huh, when Mary, <laughs> let's go back to Luke. I'm going to show you a very important thing that I purposely didn't, I, I didn't even deal with it. Go to Luke 2 and 24. What did Mary sacrifice? She sacrificed a poor man or woman's offering. Which proves those wise men did not come to the manger or or she would have pulled a fast one on the priests. Because what she offered was a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. A poor man's offering. If she had received those gifts, she could have, she could have bought the best lamb. That she, could have, she would not have had to have a poor man's offering. Now, there were no gifts at the manger. No gifts. This Christ, Christmas stuff you're doing has nothing to do with his birth. Nothing. The gifts were given to the lads two years later and no specific date. Jesus was born in April. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin, the sins of the world was, was born about a week before Passover. You notice he died on April the 15th. He died on the Passover. Well, on the cross from the 6th to the ninth, ninth hour on the Passover. He got up not on the day of the sun, but he, he got up toward the end of the Sabbath, which is really the, the seventh day he got up around three o'clock on Saturday he he sanctified the Sabbath but he got but but he was born we, we did we did we did the mad John the Baptist is six months older than he is John the Baptist was born in September and I told you when you get to when when you get to our January the 
th that's that's the Jewish uh, what tenth tenth month. But anyway, when we get to January, when you're celebrating your New Year's Eve service, which is another pagan thing because it's, it's the god Janus with the head behind the head before looking forward and, and behind but December the 31st is the Jewish January the 5th and you, some folks say he was born in March no he could not have been he would if he was born on our March the 31st it's actually April the 5th, exactly 10 days before Passover. I don't know if it was the 5th, but I know according to Scripture, the Lamb of God was born during one of the seven feasts. The, fir the first feast was in April, and the, and, and the feasts were from April through October. Those are seven months. The other five months, you don't see anything happening as far as as them honoring a holy day. It didn't happen. He was not born December the 25th. Constantine created your Christ Mass and the merchants are so happy because after you spend your money like crazy between now and, and, and Sunday, after you have your early service so you can get back home and open those gifts and some of you are having service on Saturday so you can get home to open those gifts. Where's God in this program? Even if he was born on the 25th. Why are you going to, to, to delay, to start your service at 8 o'clock instead of, of normal? Because, well, but, I, but I'm thankful for those of you that are worshiping, worshiping on the, the Sabbath. Because that's, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You, you ain't been doing that. But you will honor everything but what God told you to honor. A Christ Mass. It wasn't Christmas. It was a Christ Mass that, that Constantine came up with to, because of a pagan festival. And now we, <laughs> we have taken that paganism to the point where you have Satan clothes. And I say Satan because if you take that in from behind that tee, and put on the very end, uh, on the very end, you got Satan, not, not Santa, Satan. And y'all give him more glory than you give Lord have the audacity to bring that garbage into a sanctified place. And you see the red hat, you see a fat old pedophile that you allow your children to sit on his lap. You don't know anything about him, breathe, breathing that COVID. He doesn't even have a mask on. And, and you don't know what, what he's doing to that child. You don't know where his hand is. Come on, y'all. Come on. And, and, and be, not between Satan claws and Ishtar's bunny, we call the Easter bunny, that is a pagan festival. You only see Easter mentioned one time in all of Scripture. And they were having their, their pagan festival to the goddess Ishtar. And they were going to put Peter to death but thank God they were so busy with, with, their, with, with their pagan feast that he was able to get back and enjoy the feasts that were going on. And then, <laughs> Tooth Fairy. They all knock your teeth out. You ain't doing nothing but lying to your children. So I said, well, well, well I, I want to give the children Christmas because I want them to be happy. Isn't me happy? Uh, you keep on lying to them. Keep, keep on lying. Just because your mom and dad lied to you don't mean you got to lie to them. Raise them in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from them because Santa Claus sees you when you're sleeping. Ain't that a pervert? Pervert. Knows when you're awake. Knows when you've been bad or good. You're giving them attributes of God. Of fat. 300 pound man floating in the air in, 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 a, in a sleigh by a, b pulled by deers and one one's nose is so red you know he has pneumonia that, that thing is sick his nose is red he's sick <laughs> and y'all just can't wait 
to spend that money on chocolate because of a naked baby with wings and a bow and arrow. <laughs> Saint Nick, Saint Valentine. Ain't no saints. And they're really crazy. In 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 uh, no in uh, October, they took the 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 <laughs> they took the D uh, took a, the E D out of Hollywood, and now it's called Halloween. Halloween. Satanic, pagan, and I don't. I'll come to your house and eat, but but uh, I give thanks every day, but but not no Thanksgiving day because that is a polluted day where they 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 gave those blankets with smallpox to the Indians and killed them and then gave stop for a day of thanks. Thank you, we got the land now. Paganism, lying to your children, it's festive. I, no, I don't. You know, I want them to be happy. Let me tell you something. I give to my grandchildren all the time. They know uh, I'm particularly not giving them anything Sunday on purpose, because I don't recognize paganism. And the church, you need to be ashamed. The sanctuary is a holy place. God gave instructions on what it should look like, and anything that you bring in that is not a part of the sanctuary. Is called strange fire. You walk into these sanctuaries now and you don't see holiness. You see trees. You see uh, lights. And, and even, even some come up with, with Santa Claus hats. That is paganism. You, that, that is a perverted gospel. I'm talking about your deck in the sanctuary. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Every season is the season to be jolly. We serve the Lord daily. And I want you to notice in all of these festivities, all this pretty stuff in front of the houses, Jesus is not mentioned. It's not about Jesus. It's about gifts. You're going in your pocket, can't even pay your light bill, and, 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 and then, then going to be, be going to different organizations to help you pay a light bill. Jesus is born, and I thank God he was born, but I don't know the date, but it was in April. While shepherds were abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. It was, it was warm. Jesus himself said in Matthew 25, uh, be careful that your flight be not in winter because it's, a, it's cold over there. It's colder than it is right now. Can you imagine how dumb it, how, it would be for shepherds to be out in the field right now in 20 degree weather shivering along with the sheep? Them sheep going to die. The shepherd might. I'm showing you the paganism where this world has headed and got a president that, that is enjoying paganism. I'm talking about Biden. And tell me to respect what you're doing. You are a lie straight out of hell. I respect the marriage that God has ordained and you are another, no other Herod, liar, or pagan is going to force me to bow or knee the bell. It's time out for this foolishness. It's time out. And y'all need, I, I hope, you think about what you're doing. You say, well, I'm not a pagan. I didn't say you were. I'm saying what you're doing is paganism. Why are you putting all this stuff up? And some of the houses have been burnt down because of a crazy tree. And, and folk talking about, oh, I'm so stressed. Okay, if this, if this was all about Jesus, why are you so stressed? You should have life. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Life. I'm not angry with y'all. Matter of fact, I hope after you have spent all this stuff that you're, 
that you've got enough to pay your bills because you know you're going to take some of that stuff back anyway. I've got, if you, in, in all your giving, i got something you can do. Give yourself to Jesus. You don't have much time. Only put your trust in Him. He'll make your life sublime. And I'm asking you, in all that you've been doing, what have you given Jesus? What have you given Jesus? You're not even giving, giving him your time this week. Those of you, early, early service. Early service. Why? Won't you open those gifts the night before and go, and go give God some glory? That's paganism. And pastors, if you're going along with that garbage, you're a pagan too. You're supposed to show my people. That was my first, first cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. In the house of Jacob, their sin. I'm showing you the transgression. I, I, know, I, I know I'm hard. I mean, I mean to be hard. Your pastor can, can, can preach all that sweet stuff you want to. You, get, you, you can be just as happy, knock over benches all you want to, but I'm going to give you the word. You cannot convince me God is happy with you taking his glory. How many times has Santa Claus been mentioned? And how many times has Jesus been mentioned? You, you, he's a, you say he's supposedly born on the 25th. Well, why are you getting drunk? Why are you having all these parties? That's paganism. God is already moving in this land. It repented. He, it repented him that he made Adam. And I'm convinced it repented him that he's made some of us. That because we're supposed to be obeying him. Christ mass. Christ mass. You can give your children without without. without bringing a lie into the situation, and you, you, you keep on lying to them. You're, you're lying about Santa Claus. You're lying about the Easter Bunny. You're lying about the tooth, tooth fairy that they can't see. What's going to happen when you're telling them about Jesus and they can't see him? They say, I don't believe you. You, you. you lied to me about all that. How do I know you still ain't lying to me? I, I can't see Jesus. That's paganism, y'all. I love you, but I'm going, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Now, this is on record. God knows that I told you. We'll talk about, some, we'll talk about something else, but I, and if, 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 <laughs> if, that, if that makes you upset because of what I said, I don't care. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. So you can do what you want with it. You can look at the word or you can enjoy yourself. But God sees what you're doing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you again. Thank you for this time and this privilege. I, I pray, God, that men and women see that you did come, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And, and you celebrated only one, one uh, birthday, your bar mitzvah, when you was 12 years old at the time of the Passover. We just want to recognize the fact that you came as our Savior, as our Savior. We, we can't even predicate the date even in April as far as the date, but we know, we know that that's, that's when you were born. For a purpose, our Passover lamb. I thank you for being born, for dying for my sins. And I, oh God, I had so many. And even, even now, even now, I, I sin and come short of your glory. But I thank you, Lord, for grace and mercy. And I pray, Lord, that during this season that they set aside, that families will be safe. Because there's already been shootings, killer, killings, and and Lord, man, man cares nothing about you or, or, the, or the festivities. He's set in his own way. And Father, unless we learn 
unless we learn to present you, to present the gospel to the world, evil will wax worse and worse. But I thank you for, that, for this privilege. Glorify your name. Amen, amen. I'm going to say to you like I say to people when they're wishing me have all this, the blessings of God be upon you. Be blessed.